Britain has promised to compensate military and government personnel who get caught up in the grab on Cypriot bank accounts. Local residents will lose up to 10% of their deposits as part of a multi-billion pound EU bailout. Hundreds of people have been queuing outside banks in a last-ditch attempt to withdraw their savings from cash machines. Here's our economics editor, Faisal Islam. For many Cypriots, the cash machine computers are saying no. Cash is available up to a point, and there aren't the queues of yesterday when some branches were meant to be open. But the anger at the extraordinary grab of the savings of ordinary Cypriots, well, that's growing. <laughs> I feel like everyone else, annoyed and angry at the situation we are facing. We have no idea what will happen tomorrow. The situation is really difficult. I came here to withdraw money, but all withdrawals have been stopped. The situation is tragic. It's unfair. I have a loan from the government for 12,000 euros to support my daughter's studies. I put it in the bank and now I'll lose some of it and still have to pay it back with interest. Cypriot's political leaders met in an emergency cabinet with electronic transfers currently frozen and cash withdrawals limited. Faced with public anger, the Cypriot parliament delayed the plan to discuss today the measures to hit depositors. The government may simply not have the votes to push through the 7% hit to all depositors, rising to nearly 10% for larger deposits before the banks reopen. It's a lose-lose situation. There will be a huge deposit withdrawal from Cypriot banks with or without a deposit levy. Cyprus suffered a German knockout. Chancellor Merkel in German election year was under huge pressure from the German opposition and her own coalition partners to limit any bailout of Cyprus. The concern that emerged in a 10-hour meeting in Brussels that ended in the early hours of yesterday was about the huge amount of deposits from wealthy Russians in the island's banks. Channel 4 News has been told how the Cypriot finance minister was basically ambushed with a threat to withdraw central bank support to Cyprus's banks from Tuesday and told to take it or leave it, i.e. leave the Eurozone. In a statement published on his website, Cyprus's president of just two weeks says he came across a fait accompli, didn't want to choose the catastrophic scenario of disorderly bankruptcy, saying banks in crisis would cease to operate and paying out to depositors would cost 30 billion euros, which the state would be unable to pay, and that the service sector would be led to a complete collapse with a possible exit from the euro. Britain's long-standing historical connection with Cyprus includes military bases and expatriates. Two billion euros in British cash is deposited in Cypriot banks, the Chancellor this morning moving to reassure those military personnel. Of course, it's a very difficult situation for people who live in Cyprus, but I can tell you that for people serving in our military, people serving our government out in Cyprus, because we have military bases there, we are going to compensate anyone who is affected by this bank tax. Much depends on the reaction of financial markets opening in Asia later tonight and here in London tomorrow morning. Will the crisis in Cyprus interrupt six months of relative calm in the euro crisis generally? I understand that Cyprus's finance minister, Michael Saris, was told very specifically by his European Union colleagues that Cyprus did not matter, that Cyprus would not spread contagion in the markets, that it wouldn't spread market panic. We'll find out tomorrow. But the human consequences are clearer than ever in Cyprus. The government even contemplating shutting the banks for another impromptu bank holiday on Tuesday. Well, I'm joined now by Professor Stavros Zenios from the School of Economics at the University of Cyprus, who joins us from outside the central bank. Good evening. Um, do you think Cyprus will vote this through and will the people accept it? Well, the, the people here are very upset. They find the solution, uh, the, the proposed solution, unfair, uh, short sighted. And I would add it's also self catastrophic for the Eurozone once you hit the secure depositors. The balance of power in the parliament uh, is very split. At this point, I would say that there are no uh, yes votes for this to go through. The government understands and the parliament that on the one hand, the Cyprus banks uh, were facing uh, a closure on Tuesday. We ran out of the emergency liquidity assistance, but it could not possibly be the solution that we hit the depositors and especially the secure depositors. This is a no precedent 
uh, for a major economy to uh, not, not stand behind the secure deposits. So what, it's, what, what it's on the balance now. What, what choice do you think C uh, Cyprus has, though? Because if it's effectively been told, look, there is no systemic problem for the rest of the Eurozone for Cyprus going bust, then you, you have no choice but to accept this, do you? Well, this is the point. It's between a, a, a hard rock and a, a tough uh, place, uh, there is no rhetoric here that Cyprus should uh, abandon the euro. But the point is, uh, uh, if this plan goes through the way it is, uh, we will have more problems along the way. Uh, we are trying to send a message to the people that they should not panic. It's important that there is full support that with this agreement, if it goes through, that there is a clear support for the Cyprus banking system. But if it does not the, the case, if we keep hearing this rhetoric that Cyprus does not matter, then what is the point of Cyprus being in Europe? Uh, there are some universal principles when people join the, the Euro and the Eurozone, and these universal principles, they should be applied. It's also sending a message to the, the foreign depositors, non-EU depositors, that you, EU banks uh, are not there for you. EU banks may be there or may not be there, depending how much you count. And this is a broader message. And as you've seen the international press today in Europe and even the United States, they are concerned for this message. Are the banks of major economies reliable? Is the, the small depositor, can they accept the government's guarantees, or they may be there or may not be there? What's your advice? don't really have much choices. What, what is your advice to people with money in Spain or Portugal or Italy? Uh, do you think they should move their money, or, or do you think Cyprus is just being picked on because it's a small country? Well, absolutely not. I don't think it's good to make the situation only worse. Also here with my fellow citizens, I say this. It's good to make the situation only worse if we have a panic. We would have a catastrophe on Tuesday post externally. We should not self-inflict it on ourselves. But at the same time, the leaders of the Eurozone should understand that these raise serious issues of trust on the European banking system. And you cannot have a strong banking system if its basic foundation, trust, is eroded. Professor? Uh, the governments are supposed to be... I I'm, so I'm, sorry to I'm sorry to interrupt you, but we must leave it there. Thank you very much indeed for your time tonight.